In this video, we're going to look at the 118th scale G.I. Joe working train set we made. We're going to go over why we made a G.I. Joe train, the mock-ups and testing, the turret car, the engine, the transport car, the missile car, then go over final paint stickers, and then take it for a test run. G.I. Joe 72-piece electric train and battle set complete with battleground scenic map by Tyco, of course. So there was a G.I. Joe train set, and that ad makes it look really cool. But it came with cheap little plastic army men and army vehicles, not the Vamp or the Mobat, and it wasn't compatible with the action figures that we all had as kids. But the desire to make a toy, like a G.I. Joe train toy, makes a lot of sense because there's so many awesome scenes in movies and action sequences in movies that are based around trains. You know, people running around on trains, battling on trains, trains battling against other vehicles. It's really like a mobile playset meets a vehicle meets just an awesome setup and place to play with your figures. Now Hasbro must have realized that the Tyco train set didn't meet expectations. Kids wanted to put their figures on the train set. So they actually developed and prototyped a train set that would work with the figures, would be compatible with the scale of the vehicles, and you could actually set up with real battles with your toys. Unfortunately, Hasbro didn't go through with production of that train set, so we never got it. But you can see where they were inspired by these Battle Space Hornsby train sets probably with these spotlights and, you know, helicopter could land on them and, you know, rocket launchers and cranes and all kinds of things that would be fun to play with as a kid and really take a train to the level where it was an action vehicle. Hasbro also looks like they were really influenced by the Tempo Battlefront Express. This train, especially the engine, looks a lot like the mock-up that they did. And it was made for a larger scale figure, their line of army men and vehicles. And so it had a lot in common with what G.I. Joe would want to do with the train set. So if we were going to make a G.I. Joe train set, we needed a base to start with. And this awesome Lionel set looked like the perfect thing. It was inexpensive, large size, so it would work with the figures. It was remote control and it was battery powered with simple setup and plastic tracks. And I really want to thank fellow collector Trent for suggesting that I take a look at this set. Once I received the set, I opened it up and started to dig into the engine. It looked like pretty simple, the electronics were simple, and luckily there was a lot of empty space in the front of the engine. This made it good because I could put figures in there as drivers, the rest of the cars I started to take apart, and those looked really good and solid. Um, they had different attachments that I could take off, but I could also use them as just a flat platform to then design something and mount on top of that. I started playing around with the idea of like giant cannon on top of it, you know, looking at some of the different features like the blinking lights that the set came with, thinking about how I could use those. I also looked at a lot of historical ref and was thinking about like, could the guns move? Could they rotate? What features from the original car like this crane thing could I use um, on something that I wanted to add to it? to make it more fun and cool to play with. I also started mocking up them, some things with cardboard. You know, I was thinking about these historical armored car trains and how could figures stand on them? How could they walk around on them? Looking at some like the movies where you see like train battles and stuff. People are always walking on the cars, jumping on them. You know, I imagined like grappling hooks going on the side. So wanted lots of places where figures could hold on to or hang off of or be knocked off of and it would look exciting and be fun to play with. So at this point, um, I had sort of these ideas of what I wanted to do and I had the cardboard mock-up, but it was time to start drawing and sketching up my ideas and start breaking down what each car would be. The other trains all seem to have different cars with a very different function like the Hornsby and the G.I. Joe mock-up train. And so I figured there'd be the one car that would be where a lot of figures would stand with the turret, then something that would be like a missile car, then a transport car, and then finally the engine that would just be pulling it. I decided to start off with the turret car. I'm calling it the turret car because it's the car with the turret. Um, because I thought that would be the most challenging. There was a lot involved with it. It needed space for the figures to walk around and stand in the back. It also had to have the turret. I wanted to be able to see a figure or two in the turret. And I really wanted a lot of those like handholds on the side. I imagined like Alpine kind of like hanging off the side on a rope or, you know, Storm Shadow jumping on the side or some dreadnoughts. Because of the size of this, I had a lot of issues with my 3D printing. And the first prints I did failed. 
Um, I did the turret that was smaller and that worked out okay, but ended up having to break this up into two pieces. And you can see even my second try, it was kind of bent and folded on the side. I eventually put a lot of like detail and structure into the bottom and that ended up keeping the pieces rigid enough to print. This was my third attempt and I was pretty psyched and happy with how it came out. The figure looked like they had a really good place to fight from, you know, to stand and the turret was big enough um, to hold a guy or two. And all I had to do was hot glue the two pieces together and this allowed me to use the two separate pieces and that worked. And this had me psyched to do some more cars and get this train going. The next part of the train I was going to do was the engine. I was really happy with the way it looked. The engine, the body was really solid and well sculpted. I just decided to make a hole in the top similar to the Hasbro um, mock-up that would allow me to put figures into the front and then maybe like a little turret or something on the back. I ended up modifying it and putting the on off switch on the side. This allowed me to do some more stuff on the back that I would have otherwise not been able to do. The most important part to me was the seating and you know trying to get the positioning of the drivers correct. So I did a few mock-ups of different seats. I definitely wanted there to be two figures in the front sitting side by side. I wanted them to be able to easily slip in through the top so that you know, you could retrieve the figures or put them in without any hassle. And so after a couple iterations, I ended up with this sort of slick design that worked really well. It allowed the two drivers in front, gave them a control panel, but also had sort of a platform in the back where the third figure could stand. You'll note that I almost ended up kind of floating the seat above and the platform above so that it had very minimal contact with the floor and so didn't interfere with the rotation of the front wheels or any of the other wires. For the third figure, I wanted something kind of inspired by the warthog hatches, sort of this like turret kind of thing where they could like kind of look out almost like through these armored windows, but then pop that open and come out of a hatch. And so it was really important to me that there was like more access and other figures in the engine because it's such a big part of the train. I wanted there to be like guys climbing on, trying to open this hatch, you know, maybe Sergeant Slaughter popping out and throwing some dudes around on the roof, but like more interactive points. So this... Um, this spot where the switch used to be really allowed for that. And then I finished it off with a simple cap that would go over the drivers and seal off the whole cab if you wanted it that way. The transport car was really interesting. I got a cool package from my friend Joe Mahler and he sent me this amazing RC armadillo and he suggested like here's some parts and some other things you know to help out with your train and I was like okay this RC armadillo has to be able to drive up onto this train and be taken away and then drive off by itself. That didn't seem too complicated at first. I figured, oh, I'll just make a ramp and, you know, it'll drive up the ramp and then, you know, you'll pull up the ramp. But I wanted it to be able to, like, rotate all on its own. So I looked at the mechanism that worked with the crane on the original set and it seemed ideal to kind of mount a platform on that. Then it had this kind of ratcheting system where you could rotate it and then I figured that would hold it in place and then you could, like, lower a ramp. So I figured out a mechanism, figured it would all work, and so I set it up to try it out. Unfortunately, the armadillo couldn't climb up it. The surface was too slick and the ramp was just too steep. So I'd have to go back to the drawing board. Later in the video, I'll show you how I ended up figuring that out or what I did. But I was excited that the concept worked about the rotation and I could fit an awe striker or a vamp on it. So considered this car mostly done. And now for the last piece in the puzzle, we're doing the missile car. For this, the main inspiration was the mobile missile system. I got away from the idea of this giant kind of unwieldy cannon and thought the missiles would be like a lot more fun, a lot cooler, and feel a lot more scale with the train. This consisted of mainly two parts, the part that would hold the missiles, you know, kind of like its own base section. And then behind that would be like a cab kind of bunker from which the, uh, the Joes could operate and launch the missiles. Part of the inspiration with, for this was how everyone jokes about the Wolverine and how CoverGirl is out in the open when her, she launches her missiles, you know, getting all the, the blast from the missiles, you know, right in her face. And so this would make sure that, like, these Joes were locked down and secure and safe whenever they were operating their missiles. And if you have a keen eye, you might notice that the radar dish on top of this is from the Millennium Falcon. I actually modeled this uh, a few years ago just to replace the one on my vintage Falcon. And so I thought it'd be fun to kind of put it here as a little crossover. All the prints came out first pass, so I was really excited. They looked great. And I thought they matched up really well with the turret car. This meant that everything was pretty much done. And so I was ready to bring it all together. With everything mostly done, it was time for a finish. So that meant a little putty work, especially on the turret car where I put two sections together. But they met up pretty well. 
it also meant paint. So I was trying out a new Krylon, um, the matte Spanish moss, because it's hard to find the other camouflage stuff I normally use. And that looked like a good color. And I love the Krylon paints. They stick really well to plastic. So I definitely recommend those. Fortunately, we had some really warm weather. So the paint went on really well. I was able to paint outside and everything dried really quick. I had to do some wet sanding on the engine. Um, there were a couple parts where the, the underlying paint came through, but nothing bad there. And I ended up adding a secondary, like darker kind of gray uh, paint and then black paint for the base uh, car units. I tried some yellow on some details, but it looked a little kind of silly and cartoony. So I ended up just going back and repainting those. This was also a chance to now revisit the transport car. I wanted to add some like tie downs on the side. So I ended up drilling some holes in the side and then mounting some two millimeter rods into that and then putting these little uh, 3D printed plugs on those. That also allowed me to add this rubber band, which gave it some good uh, spring action and kind of automated the retraction of the uh, of the ramp. Also, you'll notice the ramp is longer, so I extended it. This is the final 3D print. And there you can see the kind of plugs on there. At this point, things are coming together. Um, I like the two-tone paint, you know, kind of having that like darker kind of olive drab, drawing attention to the doors and some of the hatches and things like that. The ramp was functioning and everything was looking really good. I was pretty psyched to finally see the whole train together. At this point, I remembered that flashing light from the original set and I was like, man, do I wanna do this now? But I decided, yeah, I gotta do it. So I drilled a hole in the radar and decided to try to mount the LED in there and it, it fit in. You know, I just had to drill a couple times to get the size right. Um, just put the LED in there, did some soldering and then uh, wired up this two, uh, two batter, true AA battery pack into the bottom and hot glued it up there. And now you can easily just turn that on and off. And it feels like a real toy to me, like you know something that Hasbro or uh, one of those companies would have had back in the 70s, 80s, you know, like real flashing radar action. So that was pretty cool. The simple solution to the ramp too was uh, I got this anti-slip tape. I just thought of like, hey, I should, you know, put sandpaper on there. And that made me think of anti-slip tape. So I bought this roll of like one inch tape and it worked out perfectly. I thought it looked really good. It added extra detail. And as you can see here, the armadillo climbs up it no problem. So the combination of the tape and the longer ramp seem to work out perfectly. And finally, stickers. So what is a GI Joe vehicle without stickers? You know, stickers is the last thing you do after you put it together. So I went into my stack of random stickers I have and just grabbed a bunch and spent a bit of time going back and forth between different cars until I got something that felt like this is a real GI Joe set. But now the moment of truth. Does the train work? How does it look all together? Um, you know, so let's fire it up, and take it for a run. The first time I ran it, I was so excited. It ran smoothly. There wasn't much like rocking and rolling going on. And, you know, I was a little concerned that with that many figures and the armadillo and all the cars and all the extra weight, you know, how would the engine be able to pull it? But it's no problem. It pulls it just fine. It, it actually takes four D batteries. So the engine is really heavy. And I think that like gives it plenty of traction on the roof. Isn't this awesome just like hanging out? It's like we're riding on the train with these guys. Just seeing like G.I. Joe figures, like the three and three quarter figures like on this train to scale, like ready to fight is just so exciting. It, it really got me like psyched just to think of these guys like on here. And I really wanted to set up some uh, some his tanks and like get a battle going and stuff like that and i definitely will definitely gonna see some videos on this coming forward but um want to just do some slow motion passes some detail passes so you guys could take a look at this and really appreciate you know some of the detail how the figures all look like they have a place to hang out and how fun it looks just uh running around i love the sound effects on this like I didn't even think it came with sound effects, but it's just fun that on the remote you can hit like the bell and the horn and things like that. And here's the true test of the armadillo. So you can see it's, you know, I put two big guys on it, you know, it's gung ho and the fridge. You got CoverGirl driving. This was a little scary, the turnaround. Um, you know, I think I had it like right on the edge there, but uh, but it's really cool that it like it fully functions, you know. And then here is 
coming off of it. So you can see what's great about this, the crane car that I used is that it's got those kind of stabilizers that you can extend. And I think they actually like help stabilize it. So when you rotate it here, you know, it's perpendicular to the track and then you put the ramp down. And those stabilizers, I think help a little bit. And the ramp too gives it a little bit of support and that rubber band kind of keeps it in tension. So, um, you know, that's probably helpful as well. I also didn't mention, I just hot glued all the, the 3D printed parts to the base cars. So that's what's holding them on there. So really pretty strong. Um, you know, they're not gonna come off. But what's nice about hot glue is if you want to, you could remove those. And then here I replaced the armadillo with the awe striker. Thought just even add more weight. So you got Dusty and Airborne on there now. And you know, there's Bazooka kind of <laughs> hanging out of the cab, you know, waving his arms. Just really fun. I mean, man, how fun would this have been as uh, kids having something like this? You know, if, if Hasbro had actually made that that prototype into a real production unit, it would have been a real blast. And so this is really neat, just watching these guys go around the track, um, thinking about all the adventures. I definitely am going to do some movies, and I've got some ideas for, like, what I want to do. Um, yeah, and here's just... Just all the cars lined up. You can see each one detailed. And what's fantastic about this is like, I could always go and make another car. I did buy two sets, of course, you know, why buy one set when you could buy two? So, you know, I could add another car with like, with a crane or even, even another like transport car. So you could carry like two armadillos, which would be pretty awesome. Or, you know, like Muller Joe suggested like a Skyhawk like landing pad would be awesome. Um, you know, just, just things to make this more and more fun. And two, maybe a Cobra version of the train. You know, wouldn't Cobra want to train too? Well, I guess that's it. Um, you know, this project is done. What a bear of a project it's been. Four cars is like four separate vehicle projects. So it's taken a while, but man, was it worth it. I'm loving watching this thing go around. I hope you like how it came out. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully we'll see you in some future videos where we put this thing into battle. Thanks for watching and yo joke.